He deserves more attention from us than he's getting. Congressman, your libertarian views are certainly somewhat unconventional, but they have picked up growing support in this race. I, I, I'm fascinated with your word, unconventional. Isn't it strange that we can apply that term to freedom and liberty and the Constitution limited government is a balanced budget? You're proposing this unconventional idea of government. Yeah, it's okay. time we quit this. It's time. It's trillions of dollars we're spending. Mr. Paul, why is the media ignoring you to the extent to not mention you at number two in the poll? They mentioned number one and three. Why? <laughs> Good question. I don't know if I have the answer because we have to ask those who do those kind of things. Um, I, I, I believe personally that uh, I am gaining recognition in the campaign and it's a threat to a lot of people. It's a threat to the military industrial complex. It's a threat to the bankers, the big corporations who get all the benefit. It's a threat to the people who preach that we have to be in the world and uh, be in all these countries. So I think it's big banks, big money, big corporations, and, and the people who want to be the warmongers. If, if our views, you know, keep growing in uh, popularity as they are, it's a real threat to the establishment. So the establishment is well protected in many of those individuals that control the five major networks. Well, it seems the mass media has officially given up on one Republican presidential candidate, Ron Paul, who has consistently attracted a very passionate and dedicated following, reportedly has had only one embedded reporter throughout the entire campaign. And now he apparently has none because MSNBC pulled the sole embed off the bus. This proves that the mainstream, for mainstream reporters, Ron Paul just isn't worth their time. Now, when you see video of Paul, he usually is swarmed with a very energized fan base, yet he hasn't won a single caucus yet. And this has the candidate raising suspicion. Because sometimes we get thousands of people like this and we'll take them to the polling booth and we won't win the win the caucus. So, um, you know, a lot of our supporters are very suspicious uh, about it. But um, the straw votes have been very confusing. I mean, you probably read in the paper about what happened up in Maine. I mean, they, they, it, it, there, there's just a lot of confusion. They said, well, let's have a recount. They said, well, we can't have a recount. They just write these numbers down on a piece of the paper and we throw them away afterwards. So it's that kind of stuff that makes you suspicious. Tonight, Maine's Republican Party announced Mitt Romney as the winner of their caucuses. That winner is Mitt Romney. <laughs> what the headlines haven't told you is that what happened in Maine is the messiest caucus Republicans have had so far. Certain residents in three of Maine's counties are being treated right now as if they do not exist. The numbers that the state GOP in Maine are reporting are, according to caucus chairman, incorrect. Kennebec County did vote as they were supposed to last week, but their vote total, as you see here, shows up as a zero in the Republican Party's official results. Washington County postponed their caucuses on Saturday because of a snowstorm they expected to hit the area. There's a lot more than what you said. The man who canceled it was a Mitt Romney supporter and the snowstorm he predicted didn't happen. Then there's Waldo County. Even though nearly all Waldo County towns held caucuses on February 4th, here's how most of Waldo County's votes look. Look in the official Republican Party's results list. Zero votes. Waldo County, where voters from 18 towns gathered for municipal caucuses. I talked with Matt McDonald, a pastor of a small community church in Belfast. He was nominated as the chairman of the Belfast caucus. The state instructed the chairman to not read any of the votes aloud and instead to send them directly to Augusta. McDonald made a motion to have the votes read aloud at the caucus, and it passed unanimously. The vote was eight for Ron Paul, seven for Rick Santorum, five for Mitt Romney, and there were two undecided. No results have been posted from the Belfast caucus. The lady on the line said that she had received our tallies, our votes, but hadn't recorded them online yet, and she said Romney was nine, Rick Santorum was five, Ron Paul was two. Well, of course, um, those were not the right numbers, and I told her, and she said, well, those are the numbers we have. 
You see, dozens of towns on the GOP site are listed as if no one voted, including in Waterville, Maine, home to 15,000 people. We contacted the Maine Republican Party today to find out what the heck happened to all of Waldo County's votes. So far, we have not heard back. The margin of victory for Mitt Romney in Maine was 194 votes. That's called a hair. On every occasion, the votes uh, that were lost were Ron Paul votes. In one case, the votes were actually transferred from paper out to electronics, and the lady doing the transfer was a Mitt Romney person. Remember what the establishment said about Reagan? He's radical and out of touch and dangerous. It's the same thing the establishment now says about Ron Paul. What's so dangerous about him? He wants a return to the Constitution. And though the Constitution is our founding document and embodies our first principles of limited government, sound money, and personal freedom, we've drifted so far from it that a return to those principles would indeed mean substantive change to the government. The only danger Ron Paul represents is to the establishment that fears its own loss of power. We've drifted so far, drowned so deep in debt, lost so many of our rights, fought so many fruitless wars, that if we don't rock the boat now, we may end up sinking. What's your plan for tonight? Tell the truth. I've been in politics for 35 years. My cause has been the cause of liberty. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my uh, colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up regi repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing pa Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced. What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil? What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position is to reject military intervention and in managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations. What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security, that it never changes from one administration to the next? What if war in preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? 
What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded? Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time.